Hey, and welcome to day two of Worship Stream TV. I'm Gary Batan. I'm your host. Today is day two. Yesterday on day one, we had a great one-hour session with uh, VizRT talking about all things about setting up your house of worship for streaming video. Today's show, we are going to concentrate on cameras, cameras, cameras. It's all going to be about cameras. A lot of PTZ, but not PTZ only. We're going to talk about a lot of cameras. And I want to remind everyone that after the show, we're going to announce a winner for one of our prizes. And we've got case studies and some commercials for you to watch. But stick around. There's a lot more content after the live portion of our show. I don't think we're going to go an hour today, but I'll be very shocked if we get under a half hour. So let's start the show and start talking about our top five things to consider when selecting the camera you need for your House of Worship production. And I'm going to read down the whole list. I'm not going to read all the PowerPoints, but for this one, I am. We're going to, pr we're going to prioritize getting the right high optical zoom, how installing multiple cameras give you more production value, how you can take advantage of technology for future, assist, and complement your volunteer resources, how a hybrid camera environment, that's fixed cameras, PTZ cameras, and handheld cameras, gives you more flexibility, and... One of the things we talk about is adding a flagship, or let's call it an overkill, a really, really good camera for your cornerstone of your production. Typically, that camera is going to be maybe in the back of the house, but it's real important. It's a really cool way to up your game a little bit. So we're going to start with high optical zoom. And one of the things that we see with the house of worship is there's going to be one camera that's going to be in the back of the room. And on yesterday's show, I, little dem I did a little demonstration of a tech tip about how, you know, from the back of the room, things shake and wobble a little bit more. I don't have to do that whole thing again, but just to remind you that if you're going to mount a high optical zoom camera in the back of the room, you got to make sure it's mounted stable, not on a balcony that might be vibrating or bouncing. But one of the things about a high optical zoom that's important is, is you want to get that shot of the entire uh, altar section where, 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 where the church is from the back of the room. And that might give you, you know, the choir, it might give you the preacher, it might give you some other stuff, but you're going to want to zoom in on people's faces as well as part of the production. So that back camera can also be used to zoom in. Now, if it's the only camera you have, you're going to be zooming in and out, make sure you zoom properly. But for a multi-camera shoot, it's really nice to have that camera where it can be doing a a wider shot from the back of the room of the entire stage, but then you can focus in on anyone on the stage you want to, which can be the preacher, could be the choir, could be uh, the president of your brotherhood or sisterhood. One of the things about these cameras, is you want to ensure that they're compatible with your streaming equipment. Now, for the most part, they are. In fact, one of the things we love about the latest generation of PTZ cameras is they actually have what I'm going to call universal connectivity. So most of them on the back of them are going to have HDMI, they're going to have SDI, they're going to have USB, and they're going to have a network adapter for NDI. So that's what I call universal con connectivity. With an older PTZ camera, you may only have one or the other. And with a handheld camera, it's probably just going to be HDMI and or SDI. You're not going to probably have a USB handheld camera, and very few of them are network. But make sure it's going to work with your system. And then the other thing that we think is real important is you want to have a reliable autofocus. Uh, for seamless transitions. And what that is, is that a lot of people, early PTZ or lower cost PTZ cameras, especially the ones you get from like Amazon, from China and stuff, they're okay, but their autofocus is really, not only is it not that reliable to get a good sharp focus in, but it really hunts. And that hunting makes that video kind of unusable. So you want a high optical zoom with a reliable autofocus together. And the cameras we sell do fit that description. So that's very important. And then in addition to autofocus, you want to make sure that you get the right camera for the right room with the right throw. And what that is, is that a zoom camera typically is a great choice, but they don't have as wide a field of view. So maybe you have a camera that you want to put closer to the stage on a tripod or a pole or mounted on something that's or a banister that's over there. That's all well and good, but you're going to want a wider, a, a shorter zoom or throw and a wider field of view. Whereas when you're using a large camera with a large zoom, like from the back of the room, you want to have a field of view that's more appropriate for that. So some of our vendors like PTZ Optics actually have a little kind of guide where you can kind of put the dimensions of your room and it can show you what your optical zoom is. But I think here you get a kind of feel of where telephoto and zoom is and stuff like that. And if you're having questions about it, 
you can give us a call and uh, we'll talk about the size of the room, size of your house of worship, and we'll help you match the right camera to the right, to the right dimensions of your house of worship. And once again, we talked about this last show, but I'll bring it up again. And that is, is just because you're getting new cameras doesn't mean you should get rid of the old ones. So maybe an old camera that's not as good now becomes off to the side. Maybe it's the camera that you use to face the crowd and shoot to the crowd. We're going to talk about multiple cameras in a, in a little bit, but I want to stress that more cameras, the better your production. There's nothing wrong with having multiple cameras. We're going to get to this a little later, but if you want to do a five camera production, go for it. You know, it's as if I never read this PowerPoint sometimes. I get ahead of myself. I knew multiple cameras was coming up, and I didn't realize it was the next slide. Multiple cameras is how you really make your productions more engaging for people to be able to watch. It's also really cool for when you're running screens into a, uh, uh, an overflow room, as we talked about yesterday and stuff like that. But think about multiple cameras, and I want to show you some workflows on the next slide. You can have a camera in the back of the room. You can have cameras on the side getting side angle views. So maybe there's one that's facing the keyboardist. Maybe there's one that's primarily used, you know, to get the choir. I'm a big fan and I really think this is important and I'm gonna talk to the camera again and that is, is I really love having a camera that's facing out to the crowd. I love it, especially if it's from where the preacher's perspective is. But I think one of the things with worship when you're streaming your worship services we still want people to feel like they're a part of the community, right? That they're a part of the congregation. So one of the great ways to do that is to cut the shots of the whole congregation. Now, some congregations get a little more animated than others, but if you're one of those congregations that has certain hymns or songs or stuff where everyone gets really involved, it's great to have those shots of those reaction shots. It's also really good that when the preacher's getting into something that's really, you know, kind of serious and somber and, you know, I don't mean sad, but you know, a little more serious where you can cut away to some zoom in and some of the people in the crowd who perhaps are showing, you know, their emotional reaction to it. You know, you'll get your reactions too. So I love that crowd camera. And if you're streaming video from your house of worship, if you have one camera, I really urge you, you put another camera up that could be focused on the crowd or the crowd behind you or at the preacher as a, lit, as a second one. It's a nice way to go. And in a multi-camera situation like that with two cameras, you would get peek the camera in the back of the room is your main camera. You'd cut to the camera that's facing the preacher or the crowd that's a little more closer to that one. You can adjust your back one while you're going on, then cut back and forth and it can make it as, you can seem like you have four or five cameras in the room where really all you have is two PTZ cameras. So it's, what, it's not quite a tech tip, it's more a how to get more for less tip. One of the things about worship video that is makes it so great but makes it challenging is that we tend to be volunteer driven. As I mentioned in the last show, it would be really wonderful if every one of our congregations included someone who, you know, worked for a Hollywood studio or was a wedding videographer or worked for a local sports team and produced their videos. But the truth of the matter is we're volunteer based. And even as you as the video tech person, this might just be your hobby, something you help with. It's not like every church has the ability to have someone on the payroll, especially who's a video tech guy. So, very important to be able to have stuff that can be used by the volunteers easily. And one of the easiest things in the world that we really love is to get a camera with auto tracking. Now, over the last couple of years, auto tracking has gotten so much better. And we're going to go to that. But auto tracking just basically means the camera picks me. And if I walk back and forth, the camera follows me. The other thing that's really cool is, cool is cloud or Remy remote operation of the camera from anywhere. Now, that doesn't mean you're sending all your video up to the cloud but it does mean that your camera operators don't necessarily have to be in the facility, nor do your switcher people have to be in the facility. So it's kind of like a hybrid workflow that's remote-based, and we'll get into that a little bit more. And obviously for small churches, it's a little more challenging, but for even a mid-sized church using something like a TriCaster and three cameras, that added ability to do some remote control is really, really cool. Let's talk about auto-tracking. Hey, it's exactly like it sounds like. You'll follow a subject without the need for manual control. And we're going to shoot, I, I want to explain, almost every one of our PTZ cameras we we'll get to later in the show have auto tracking capability. And the audio tracking capabilities over the last couple of years have come so far. It used to be that it just found the person as a blob against the background. And if the background was not well, enough contrast, it didn't work. Now we have auto tracking that can actually lock on people's faces, 
hand gestures, their motion, can know multiple people in the crowd. There's a lot of different levels of auto tracking. So we've got a great little demo from Panasonic here and their auto tracking is on the higher end, but let's watch that video and then I'll come back in. Imagine a world where cameras are not just capturing footage, but actively participating in creating it. With the integration of auto tracking functionality, this is a reality. Hi there, Mass here to present different levels of auto tracking available for the Panasonic PDZ range. Let's start with the new built-in entry-level AI-based version of our popular auto tracking. It really does make the life of a camera operator easier. So, what is it all about? It's a smart function that tracks a subject with a single camera without the need to connect to external devices. It is practical and fully automated. The control interface looks just like our already available high-end auto tracking system named AWSF100, which we will talk about briefly later in the video. Here you can choose the angle, enable the marker, set pan tilt limitations, lock out the audience as well as select go to position, presets and so on. It maintains framing in a variety of situations Trust me, I challenged it. Built-in auto tracking maintains stable shooting, even in side shots, and allows to quickly track the subject to avoid missing the spot. The function offers hands-free operation and no connection to external equipment is required. So, no complicated wiring or hassle with the installation. The built-in auto tracking is enabled via a free firmware upgrade. Panasonic built-in auto tracking can be used to deliver lectures, keynote speeches, record internal training sessions and other situations where a single person is being filmed. The auto tracking function can be used simply and without complicated wiring, installation or setting. The function is ideal when tracking a single person in the frame. For more advanced settings, such as facial recognition, handling several people in the same frame or multi-camera control, we recommend to look at the AW SF100 or SF200 optional software. That's it for today. Thank you for watching and see you soon. All right, we're getting a lot of questions about auto tracking cameras in the chat and we appreciate that. But just to remind everyone, uh, and we said this yesterday and we're saying it again today and tomorrow, Jim and I will be coming back tomorrow at the end of the show and we're going to be taking the questions that were asked through the chat. We're going to be answering all those questions at the end of the show. And we did that to keep time on schedule for what we're doing, but we also felt that a lot of people were gonna ask the same questions, so we'd figure out the best possible answers. So all those auto tracking questions will be answered on the next show. Remote operation of cameras from anywhere. Now, that, there's a lot of different levels of remote operation. The folks at Bird Dog through their cloud can allow you to completely operate the camera, pan, tilt, zoom, adjust the color, do all the cool stuff like that through their cloud based, and then bring that camera into your house of worship, if it's a remote camera place somewhere. And the folks at Viz actually have a complete remote cloud-based solution that we're gonna play that video soon. But I don't wanna play that video yet because I wanna talk about something that came out in yesterday's show that I think is so cool where remote can come in. And that is, is say you're a church that's got a TriCaster in it and you have a sister church on the other side of town, you could put a PTZ camera or multiple PTZ cameras in that church and actually have that church's PTZ cameras controlled from your main church and even have the video from those cameras coming back to the main church as part of your production. So your production can be cameras in your house of worship and in other houses of worship that you work with. But let's play this Viz Vector clip because it's really cool. And Viz Vector is a professional TriCaster in the cloud type solution. It's really for your higher end churches with bigger budgets, but this clip really shows you the potential that's there. So let's roll that. Viz Vector Plus is VizRT's live video production switcher. It has all of our video production needs to switch a live event fully in cloud. Cloud allows us to do productions remotely in your own home, in a studio, or at your house on the beach. Viz Vector Plus is an incredibly easy solution to pick up for anyone that's familiar doing any kind of technical direction. It works like a modern multimedia switcher works. You have your playback should you need it. You have your integration with external graphic sources. You can bring in sources, you can send them out. People can be watching their previews at home. You could be switching in Los Angeles while the director in New York is watching from their home, while there's cameramen doing the job down in Florida, not having to have to travel as much is really a very positive thing. 
The biggest thing that VizRT is doing is eliminating latency, getting rid of the time disparity from when it actually happened to when I'm seeing it as the director. It's kind of a game changer. All right, so that was a great clip, and I think you've seen some of the potential of stuff like that. And we'll be talking more about that in tomorrow's show as we go into advanced workflows and AV over IP and NDI. Now I want to jump into creating a hybrid camera environment for even more flexibility. Now, what we're talking about here is using PTZs and handheld cameras. And you can use any PTZ cameras with any handheld cameras. They don't have to be the same brand. They don't have to be the same manufacturer. They could be completely different. However, if you really want to do the highest end production you can from your house of worship, and your house of worship has challenges of lighting, which almost every large church does, we really recommend that you take a look at budgeting enough money to get a matched set of PTZ cameras and handheld camera, such as the CRN100 from Canon and the XA65 camcorder. Those camcorders essentially have the same exact optics. The color is the same, the image sensor is the same. So now when you're cutting back and forth between the two cameras, it looks perfectly. You don't have to worry that when you're cutting between the two cameras, that you know, all of a sudden your image is a lot lighter on one or darker on the other. I'm wearing a black shirt, so it's gonna look black today, but you don't wanna worry that about the blue shirt looks lighter blue or darker blue from one to the other. And also, you can get the same kind of depth of field and as Canon calls it, color science. So, you know, Canon has, has cameras that match, JVC has cameras that match, as does Panasonic. But uh, it's really something if you're, if you're looking to add a group of cameras, we suggest it. And why do we say not all PTZ cameras? Well, because in a house of worship, that handheld camera isn't necessarily handheld. It can be on a tripod, but it's an operator-operated camera where that operator can really be on the angle that you need to be. So if you're shooting a wedding one day, that person could be following the bride down. If you're having a special you know, band playing or something at the church, you could have him focusing in on the band and getting you know different shots and stuff like that. And I think that it's, it, it's great that we have PTZ cameras out there and you can operate them all remotely. But a lot of times as a house of worship, you might have your same person operating your TriCaster, your vMix, your OBS as the person who's operating the PTZ cameras. Whereas if you don't have enough PTZ cameras to have a dedicated PTZ operator, it's not a bad thing to have someone being a shooter with one of the cameras. So this is what we're producing there. It doesn't have to be that way, but we find, you know, two, three, four PTZ cameras and one handheld really allows you to do another level of production and creativity. So here's like a, a sample of what we're talking about. If we could bring this up full screen for a second. So we're showing that, you know, there's some camcorders in the back of the room on the side and then if you, uh, some PTZs. Then if you notice the camcorders we have on the side, we're actually showing them with a neat little thing that's a Wi-Fi NDI encoder that is actually using the Wi-Fi to bring the video into the switcher from Killable. We talked about encoders yesterday a little bit. Tomorrow we're going to talk about more of that in the, of the workflow. Your camera, that's your handheld camera, can be brought in through traditional HDMI or SDI, through NDI, through a wall jack, or through a converter like this. Very cool stuff. And what I wanted to stress is any camcorder that has either HDMI or SDI output can be turned into an NDI network camcorder if you're doing NDI. And I know you got a lot of questions about NDI. We're going to have a lot of answers, but that's going to be more on tomorrow's show for you. This one is... Hmm. I'm going to try to answer this in a way that's... All right. So, sometimes... The guy on stage, the talent, the preacher, whatever, wants to just have that look that just looks a little bit better, a little more broadcasty. He wants that image to really pop when he's on it. This is as much for the in the audience venue as the streaming venue. And by upgrading to a real more cinematic camera, a camera that can get you some depth of field, a camera that has a better color space, crisper, can do that bokeh effect where, you know, if he's standing in front of the uh, choir, the choir will be blurry behind him and he'll be in focus. Then you can focus in on the choir and he gets a little blurry, you know, like that. That takes a real camera to do that. So we want to talk about those a little bit because they can really take your production to the next level. And we found that once you get a preacher in front of one of these cameras, he or she is never going to go back to a PTZ or a handheld camera. So be prepared. If you're going to do it, do it right and be prepared to spoil your, your, your audience 
and your talent and your preachers, but it's really a way to take your take your quality or production up another notch. So high-end PTC cameras like the Panasonic U160, what were we talking about? These cameras are going to have a one-inch image sensor. What's so important about that? A one-inch sensor is going to be so much better in awkward low-light positions. It means you're going to be able to zoom in and get the guy, the preacher's face really nice and clean. It's not going to be blurred out. It's not going to be shadowy. It's going to look really nice. You're going to be able to get it on the right colors so the skin tones look great. It's a way to just take your production to the next level. DSLR and mirrorless cameras, they can be integrated into your solution as well. If they have an HDMI output with and this is a tech tip I want to give you. So if we could for a second, and this one's important, is not all DSLRs and mirrorless cameras have clean outputs. What do I mean by clean output? You have to have an HDMI or an SDI output that's going to give you just the video. A lot of older cameras and even some more recent ones, they're going to have all the menus that control the camera on the screen at the same time from the output of the HDMI. So you want to make sure if you're going to integrate one of these into your solution, you have to have what we call a clean output. What's the easiest way to say if you do or don't? Take the HDMI jack directly out of your cam your, your camera, put it in record mode, and plug it into a TV via HDMI. If you see a clean signal, you're getting a clean signal. If you see the menus, you may want to try to see if there's some settings you can get away to get them out of there. But the truth is some, especially older DSLRs, there's no way to get a clean output of the HDMI. So just a little tech tip warning on that for how's the worship, because I know a lot of your gear is donated gear. And if you got that donated camera, it's great to be able to use it, but it's got to have the clean output. But these are the cameras too, that now with the right lens, you can get the cool effects. You can make it look better, look prettier, look sharper. I also find the nice thing about having a camera that's a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, especially if you're going to do some shots that are more glammy type shots, they just pop a little bit differently and look a little better. So and the glam might be that you've got a band you want to focus on, or maybe it's a, a particular something you brought back from a trip that you want to be able to show people, hey, we brought this back from Bethlehem. We brought this back when we were on a mission in Africa or what have you, and some things you just want to show off them, the local culture. Having that better camera, it's really going to make it pop, and you want to take still pictures of it also. And the last is, you know, if you are a house of worship that has a big budget, that has someone within your congregation or on your payroll who actually understands how to shoot cinema quality video, putting a cinema camera in their hands like the RED camera is just going to take your production from 10, 11, 12 up to 20. And um, you, these just the, 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 we're finding more and more in the larger churches that there's a little bit of competition locally of who can have the better camera and the better looking video. And it's gotten more than just, I have three cameras, I have six cameras. It's getting to the point where I have this really great cinema camera and I'm getting these really great depth of field cinema looks for them. And some people use it just to, they don't even stream with that. They just use it to record stuff. But then when they're editing the shows later for, you know, editing the, the, the service for people to watch later, you know, they use that too. So cinema cameras are an option. I know that for the bigger budgets, I'm not suggesting that any house of worship needs or should be getting into cinema cameras. But if you want to, we've got them available and so do our network of friends. And I want to stress this now. We have a network of local dealers who, who can put you in touch with all this stuff because sometimes you need a little more help. You need someone who's going to come in, take those measurements, tell you what cameras you need, help you place them, get you with a switcher, help you get all set up, train you, and also service the equipment. That's where a local integrator comes in, in handy. And we have local integrators who we can put you in touch with. So it's not like you have to buy all this stuff from video guys and have it show up in a box and then figure out how to set it up yourself. If you want that extra help, we have it available through our local integrator. So thank you very much for that part. And thank you to all our local integrator friends and affiliates who help all you guys get what you need. Now we're going to go a little more product driven. We're not going to go to every camera we sell, but we're going to go through the brands of cameras we sell. Just a walk through where they fit in and how they can help you with your house of worship production. So let's dive right in on the list. And we're going to start with PTZ Optics. Take your production to the next level. PTZ Optics is, I feel, probably one of the best values there is in PTZ cameras. They have a great feature set, a great price, a five-year warranty. PTZ Optics also has US-based tech support that's there for you before, during, and after the sale if you run into any problems. Really can't speak highly enough. More, 
We love PTZ Optics. If you're looking for multiple cameras on a budget, they're the way to go. If you've got a tight budget to get one camera, they're the way to go. They are by far and away the best value we offer. It doesn't mean they're the best cameras, but they're a tremendous value. We really love PTZ Optics. Bird Dogs cameras, great value also, but they are the kings of NDI. They do NDI just a little bit better, a little bit deeper than everyone else. They offer products that have full NDI as well as NDI HX3. They have their whole cloud component, so you can control their cameras remotely, either from a laptop on the system through NDI or remotely actually through their cloud. Great stuff. I really love their cameras. Their P240X is a 40X throw, which is phenomenal for the back of a long church. It's over, you know, 100 feet deep. And then they also have 4K cameras as well that do a great job. So Bird Dog, definitely on the list that we recommend. Panasonic Connect, the UE160 and the UE150, that's what they use in event spaces for sporting events, for concerts. When you go to a, your local uh, arena and they're showing a concert, there's a good chance that UE150s and 160s are in that room. They are over $10,000. They are expensive. They are the best. And if that's what you are and you're the size of that church, you want to put some of these in there, you will never regret Panasonic Connect PTZ cameras. They have less expensive cameras as well, but the 150 and the 160 are really the ones that sell the most. Canon, we talked about it a little bit earlier with Canon. What I love about Canon is the, the Ca Canon's really first and foremost an optics company, a camera company, and they also make PTZs. But the beauty of it is their cameras and their PTZ cameras really are, they're beyond matched. They're the same basically image sensor, brain, and uh, guts going. So it's the, when you're matching PTZs with a Canon camcorder, you're getting that Canon color science that separates them from low light. For, for the money for low light shooting, there's nothing better than Canon. They really do a great job with that thanks to their big image sizes. And the CRN100 with the XA65 is a great match, but they have more expensive cameras that so they match up with more expensive camcorders as well. So Canon, great company, best optics around. They really... The Canon color science is a real thing. And if color and depth of field and those other things are important to you, Canon is definitely on the list of what you consider. JVC, great stuff. The, the, the 500 series handheld camcorder is probably the event space camcorder most used. It has full support for 4K. It is SDI, it is HDMI, it is NDI. It is a wonderful solution. They have PTZ cameras as well. JVC has also invested a ton in remote Remy type workflow situations. So if you want to be in a situation where your operator of your service doesn't have to be in the house of worship at the time, this is a great choice. It's also a great choice if you want to do what I said before, where you have two or three churches, but you want one central uh, OBS, VMix, Wirecast, or TriCaster but it's going to be controlling and speaking to cameras that are multiple cameras remotely. They do a really good job with those workflows. And uh, I'm just going to add, they also have their own little box available that includes a uh, vMix pre-installed for about five grand. Marshall makes some great cameras and camcorders. When you're looking at the football game and you see those little cameras stuck into the pylons or uh, on the goal, it's usually a Marshall camera. Their cameras are wonderful. They now support HX3. What I really think you want to look at is if you want to get one of those lipstick cameras in a tight spot to focus on the preacher, get a shot of the uh, the choir or the band going, really nice thing to do. Those cameras can be mounted on a ceiling. They can mount it hanging upside down for a top view to look down if you're reading from scriptures or things like that. So great little brand, Marshall. We love them. Their PTZ cameras are there. As you can see, VizRT, that's the folks who make the TriCaster. They've got some 4K cameras that are really tremendous and do a great job with HX and their cameras are really wonderful as well. We have a lot of cameras to choose from, probably overwhelming you as a house of worship choice, but I wanna stress is you don't have to have all the same camera. You don't have to have all the cameras from the same manufacturer. You can mix and match as you want. And if you tell us what your church is, the size, what you're using is mixing and streaming, and what cameras you're looking to add and what angles, we can help put you in the right cameras for those jobs, for those situations. And whatever you need, our team is fantastic. The guys operating the system right now, the same guys you'll talk to, the, James and Adam, and they can give you complete instructions on what is the right camcorder to add to your existing system. Or if you want to start from scratch on a whole new system, they can help set you up with stuff like that too. So I want to thank those guys for doing a great job. And I just want to 
recap what we hit on the show, the top five things to consider when selecting a camera you need for HO production. Get the right optical zoom to match your needs. Multi cameras make it multiple, multiple times better. Take advantage of technology like cloud and Remy and auto tracking. A hybrid environment for house of worship is really what we see most times. That's, you know, using PTZs and handheld cameras. And if you're a larger church, definitely look to invest in getting a flagship camera that's really going to allow you to take your uh, production quality to the next level. So I thought it was going to be about a half hour. It was a half hour. I actually nailed it. So I'm very proud of myself. We've got uh, James is going to come on and we're going to show you some case studies, some commercials from our sponsors. And then James is going to announce you who won our first uh, prizes. We're doing some raffles and all that. So this is Gary for House of Worship. I'll be back here tomorrow twice. I'll be back here tomorrow doing a show on advanced workflows, concentrating a lot on NDI. And then also I'll be coming back at the end of the show to answer all your questions that came in over the chat with Jim. So thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in. This is Gary from Worship Stream. TV. That's